West Virginia, actually, and uh, responded well there. And uh, we trust that uh, God will use it to encourage some in the house of God. Those of you watching online, we welcome you to Connection Baptist Church as well. And uh, we're just excited that you're here, regardless of whether it's online or whether it's in the house of God. Malachi chapter 3. Beginning in verse 16, going down to verse 18. Would you stand in honor of reading God's word again? We do this in prison. The inmates know when I stand up with my Bible, you can see them already stepping up uh, because it's a habit. Uh, and the reason, again, we do is because in the book of Ezra, when they found the word of God, and they found it had been lost for many years, literally. And when they found the manuscripts, the Bible says that Ezra stood up behind a pulpit and he read, that's all he did, read the word of God. By the way, Check it out. Six hours. Six long hours. The average Christian don't even read their Bible in a week, six hours. So, having said that, they stood in their place. It says, and when the word of God was open, they stood up. I like that, don't you? Why? You're giving reverence to the Word of God. You're respecting God's Word and showing that it means something, and it is different from any other book. And thank God that it is. Malachi chapter 3, verse 16. And they that feared the Lord spake often one to another, and the Lord hearkened. In other words, he hears our conversations, especially when we're talking about him with others. All right? Bragging about him. Bragging about Jesus. And the Lord hearkened and heard it, and a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord and that thought upon his name. Can I ask you a question? How often in a day do you think about him? We think about other things. We think about what we got to do, our to-do list. We think about work. We think about family. We think about this, the weather. We think about what we're going to do tomorrow. How often in a day do you stop and just think? The word think is the word meditate, all right? Uh, and just think on him. Think about him. Who he is. What he's done for you. Man, God is so good. Amen. And as the inmates always say all the time. Amen. God is good. And they that feared the Lord and thought upon his name. And they shall be mine, saith the Lord of hosts, in that day when I make up my jewels. And I will spare them as a man spareth his own son that serveth him. Then shall ye return and discern between the righteous and the wicked between him that serveth God and him that serveth him not. Hey, the text verse is found in verse 17, and the title of the message, Are You Basically His Jewel? Are you one of his jewels? When we think of jewels, sapphires, emeralds, rubies, diamonds, they're stones that come from rock, and come from caves and come from the ground and so forth and so on, but they all have a distinctive commonness. And that distinction is they're all very valuable, especially if they're very good ones. Amen? And uh, so I want you to be reminded, if you're saved by the grace of God, regardless of what your background is or where you came from or what you've ever done, you're special to God. I said last week I'm a PC with God. Amen? I'm privileged in Christ. <laughs> Amen? And I thank God that I am. And so are you if you know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. Father, in Jesus' name, touch this preacher today. God, I'm not much. I know that. Just came from a cave, from a dark place, a deep place. And uh, not worth much, chemically speaking. But Lord, in your sight and in your hands and in your family, I'm somebody because you saved me by the amazing grace of God. 50 some years ago. Father, we're grateful for that. Thank you for all that you've been, all that you've done. And I pray you'll take the message today. Those listening online today, live or later, I pray that you might speak to someone's heart today. Maybe someone is discouraged and downtrodden and in a valley. May they learn today that they are precious to God and God knows where they are living and where they are make this a very special day. Make it a special time with the Lord and with our people of God. Touch and fill us again with your Holy Ghost anointing and filling. And we'll thank you and praise you for what's accomplished. And as always we pray, as an old man of God concluded every radio broadcast, save that soul that may be nearest hell today. 
In Jesus' name we ask and pray. And all of God's church said, amen. amen and amen. Would you be seated? Last week we shared with you several things about Malachi. Malachi is a man of God. We need some men of God today to stand up, still call sin black, uh, heaven sweet, Jesus real, uh, salvation and the gospel still saves and all these different things. We need a man of God in the pulpit. We need men of God across America to stand up like never before. We're living in a time and a day, trust me, that man is getting more difficult to stand. And I have I don't think we in America have yet seen what it's gonna be like somewhere soon down the pipe. But we need some men of God. Then the second thing, Malachi's name in the Hebrew means a messenger of God. And he just he distinctly gives a message. Only four chapters in the message. But he preaches to Israel and Judah. And basically, his primary focus is against, believe it or not, the preachers of his day. The priests of his, of his day. They were stealing and robbing from God. And let me just pause and say this. I'm appalled sometimes how many God robbers there are in the church. That's right. Read Malachi chapter 3, verse 7 and verse 8. Yep. Yep. The people said, wait a minute, you're caught. Wherein have we robbed you, God? And God comes back with the word and said, you robbed me of tithes and offerings. Do you understand tithing is still taught in the Bible? Amen. You say, oh, that's Old Testament. Oh, no, no, no. God committed it in the New Testament. And there's a big example. Now, here's the thing I'm appalled by, okay? Can I just unload on somebody today? And if I hit your uh, face with a fist of the truth of the Word of God, so be it, okay? Amen. I, I'm too old to worry about offending anybody anymore, all right, when it, when it comes to preaching. I really don't worry a great deal about that, to be honest and frank. But can I just simply say, here's what I'm appalled by. In every church I've ever pastored, and I do not know what you give, nor do I want to know. But I do check up with treasures occasionally, especially when deacons have been nominated or when leadership such as Sunday school teachers is going to handle the Word of God. And I certainly check out even staff members, okay, from time to time. You say, oh, man, no, no preacher would not tie. I got news for you. I had a next son-in-law never gave a dime to God. Mm -hmm. And he was a pastor. Oh. Okay? And I'm not picking on him. I'm just simply telling you what I know. Okay? But here's the deal. Let me ask everybody here a question. Here's the concept of multitudes of believers. If I'm at church, I'll definitely tithe. If I miss church, I don't owe God anything. Ooh, that's bad. Do you make it up when you're not here? I do. I do. For years. Okay? Do you get it when you're not in the house of God? Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Hey, this thing called the tithe, you owe God everything. Amen. I'm surprised he only wants 10%. <laughs> it's all that his. amazes me. It's all his anyway. Amen. And by the way, God don't want your money because he's broke. It's far cry from that. God wants your money because part of your money is your very life. When you give your money to God in a tithe or offering, that represents minutes, hours you work for, you can never relive, and you are literally giving not just money, you are laying part of your life on the altar for God Almighty. Amen. Now, that wasn't in my sermon. It just came to heart, okay? And uh, take it, work with it, or loan it, whichever one you want to do, all right? But let me just simply say, God calls us in this verse, we're his jewels. Don't you like that? Hey, I'm a diamond. <laughs> I sparkle and shine. Not necessarily so much by you. You look at me and say, he's just an old man. that just yells, screams, and hollers a little bit. But in the sight of God, I'm somebody. You with me? Hey, when you look at that person you shave every morning, or ladies you work at hairdo thing for an hour before you come to church, I got news for you. You may not look and may not even sometimes appreciate what you look like in the mirror. I mean, could not, James couldn't appreciate what he looks like in the mirror. I'm only kidding, Brother James. But anyway, I, I'm just simply saying, hey, when you look at that person, you may not think you're much. But if you say, by the grace of God, you're somebody special. Amen. You're, may, you're going to be one of his jewels, and you're one of his jewels now. He just not made it up yet. But I was talking about a future event when we're going to become his jewels and he's going to do some things when we get to heaven because we're his jewels. Amen? I'm glad I'm one of his jewels. Well, to become one of his jewels, and not everybody here may be one of his jewels, I don't know. 
Not everybody watching me online, live or later, at a later date, may really be a jewel of God. Well, how do you become one of his jewels? First thing we shared with you last week, jewels always, always must be discovered. Jewels just, just, just jump out of the cave and say, hey, I'm here. <laughs> Somebody's got to go down in that cave and dig. Somebody's got to go down in that cave and find and discover that they're there. Everybody with me? Everybody got that? Hey, I got news for you. Back in November 1970 at Babcock and Wilcox, late one night, I was reading a gospel track, and guess what happened? God came to find and discover one of his jewels. What a jewel then? I became one of his jewels. Are you with me? I don't know the time, the day, the place you got saved. You trusted in the Lord as your Savior. But I got news for you. When you did, God made you a jewel. And you're special to God. Amen? He's discovered you. He found you. Don't you ever, ever say, let me tell you when I got saved. And that's okay to say that. I'm a little bit okay with that. But I can't stand anybody say, well, let me tell you when I found God. No, 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 God found you. Let me tell you when I chose to trust God. No, you didn't do the choosing. God chose you. Are you with me? Well, let me tell you when I, I was seeking God. The Bible says nobody seeks God. Sinners never see God, but God starts the seeking process the minute a baby's born. That's a fact. Now, a lot of them that he seeks aren't going to respond. A lot that get uh, called by God are necessarily going to answer the call. The, the ones God pricks and convicts about their lostness, they're going to hell on, in overdrive or, or their sins, they may not all respond to God's call. But thank God there's enough of us that do. And thank God those of us who do, we become one of his chosen jewels. Are you with me? And so thank God. Hey, are you aware? Diamonds, rubies, sapphires, emeralds can never, never find themselves. Think about it. Hey, just like I said, they don't jump out of a cave. Hey, I'm here. Find me. No. Why? Because they all have the same problem. Jewels never find or never found by themselves, but it requires a gymnologist, okay, to know where to go, to know where they are, and then to find and discover them. Isn't that true of your life? That night I had no idea God was going to discover me at BMW, that God would come to me. I'd read track after track and had done work, done a thing for me so far other than I was interested. I believe the Bible is the word of God because, man, I'd read the, uh, some of the Jack Van Hippie sermons on the coming war with Russia and Ezekiel 37, 38. And by the way, let me just simply pause and say this. This globe is a powder keg getting ready to explode. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You hear me? May not be in my lifetime. It's already exploding. Yeah. But let me just simply say, I've never been able to say this publicly before, but I'll say it today. The alignment of all the nations in the final world war that will destroy everything by God himself is perfectly today aligned. Yep. Read Ezekiel chapter 37 and 38. Okay? When you get to 38, you'll discover Russia's where she needs to be. Red China's where she needs to be. Turkey's where she needs to be. Ethiopia's where she is. She's being overrun by, uh, in, in the Sudan, and a lot of African nations are going Islamic. Mm -hmm. There's nothing. I don't know of one prophecy got to be fulfilled for the trump of God to start shouting right now. Yeah. Shh, shh, shh. Do you hear that? Shh. Cade was just doing, <laughs> testing his trumpet. <laughs> are you with me? I believe that. I may get to see it in my lifetime, but if I don't, I still win. Amen. I'm going through the undertaker or the upper taker. And if, the, if you're a child of God, thank God when we get taken, we're going to make up some of his jewels. Amen. amen and amen. What about jewels? How are they discovered? Number one, they're discovered in the deep. They're discovered in the deep. They're in the ground. There are caves that sometimes in Africa they found diamonds in the ground, caves in the mountains. They're always found in deep places. What does that have to do with you and I? We sing that old hymn, I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore. I don't know about you, God saved me from a deep place. 
Amen? Amen. <laughs> Young lady, for, last one to get saved here. It's nodding her head up storm. Yeah, I saved you from a deep place. Been there, done that. But thank God I don't do that anymore because I'm saved by the grace of God. I got a new life. I got a new master. I got a new Lord. Man, can I tell you what? I'm living a life. And I'm enjoying every blessed moment of it till the day he stops my breath to breathe or the trumpet of God sounds. Man, and I'll be more satisfied and more alive than I am even now. Amen. And thank God for that. Hey, they're found in the deep. But they're found not only in the deep, they're always found in the dark. Isn't that true? I've always, I always been amazed, Pete, going into homes visiting people. Sometimes sad to say, in my own church. They got a call because somebody was sick or some problem hit them and and just to check up on them. But here's the thing I've always been amazed at. How many homes are dark? I mean, in broad daylight. They got shades pulled. They got the lights, light bulbs that don't look like they eat them. And you, man, if you open your Bible and want them to even read, you can't read your Bible because they're dark. I know about you. I like light. Me too. First thing I do in the morning, if I don't forget about it, don't get involved with my Bible and some things and my coffee. Open it up. Uh, in the morning is that I open every shade, every curtain. I want sunlight to come in. Mm -hmm. I hate dreary, dark, rainy days. I love the rain, <laughs> but I'm a sun. I, I love sunshine. Now my disposition is not always sunny, <laughs> all right. But I love the sunshine. Mm -hmm. I love a bright day. You know why? Because I know the one who puts the sun up there. Amen. Mm -hmm. Last night the moon. My wife called me out to the porch and. Mm -hmm. And uh, she, uh, she said, come out here with me and look at what's up in the sky. Last red moon, by the way, of the season. And I don't know if you looked at it last night outside. It, man, it lit up. I could see every individual tree beside my house. Mm -hmm. I bet you and I know something about Bow Lake. 30 yards to 40 yards out. I could see every trunk. I could even see the leaves, Miss Kay, mm -hmm. that had already started to cake. And there, it was that bright. Beautiful. Hey, who placed it there? We were talking about going to heaven. Me and you just a minute ago back there while we were singing one of them songs. And, and you said something about heaven. And I said, yeah, we're going. We may be going sooner than later. And she said, hey, and the good news is when we get there in our mansion, thank God there's no rent or payments. <laughs> Already been paid for me in full, praise God. Amen. Praise God. Can't find a house like that today, all right? Oh. You're not. But I'll tell you what, it was bought and paid for not by you, buddy, but by... Jesus Christ in his own blood. Amen? And then I turned to her. I said, I got another good one for you. Hey, with everything going up, thank God no electric bills because he's the light. <laughs> Praise God. Man, I'm getting a little excited. And my own preaching, that's a little weird, isn't it? But anyway, hey, they're found in the deep places and they're found in the dark places, caves and inside rock that they, they've never seen the light of day. And that's exactly how it was when I came to Jesus. I didn't know anything about the light. I didn't know anything much about Jesus. Just a bunch of head knowledge. But I'm telling you, that night when God took it from my head and moved it to my heart, God transformed my life. Mm -hmm. And I've never been the same since. That's been 52 years ago. And by the way, next month's my spiritual birthday. All right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's been 53. Yeah, because it's 23, isn't it? Yeah, 70. Yeah. 53 years old. Good night. I never even thought I physically would ever make it to 53. <laughs> but, hey, they're in the deep. They're found in the dark. Let me ask everybody here a question. Have you been discovered yet? Been called yet? Been saved yet? Hey, I'm telling you, you need to be, you should be, you ought to be, because, man, it's much later than you ever think. Okay, like the old farmer at the house, he had an old great-grandfather clock. Do you remember those things? My aunt had one, and, man, I'm telling you what, I'd sleep over there some nights, and, man, you could hear that thing downstairs. Dong, dong, dong. And a farmer had one of them in the corner of his house, and they were sitting in the bed. And that thing started donging before they went off to sleep. And that thing donged and donged and donged. It was about 11 o'clock. It donged to 12 and 13 times and 14 times. and said, hey, honey, we need to get up and get up now. It's later than it's ever been before. <laughs> Listen to me. Hear me well. This globe doesn't even understand what's happening. But God's in charge. And I can prove that from my Bible today if you want to. See me after the service. Let me tell you something. Jesus could come this week. Woo! He could come today. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. There's ducks on a pond like we've never seen before. Mm -hmm. But anyway, hey, they found that I had planned on staying, staying on that point, but I sort of like that. Look at what Job says about the darkness. 
They grope in the dark without light. He's talking about sinners. You know, the people that's unredeemed, unsaved by the grace of God. And he maketh them to stagger like a drunken man. What does he mean? He means an unsaved sinner doesn't see anything coming. Sad to say, some church members don't see it coming. Our church saved people don't see it coming. But there's some things happening. But man, can I tell you what? I'm glad I'm no longer like, like this guy in the dark. I'm living in the light. I came to the light when I got Jesus Christ as my Savior. Isaiah 29 says, Woe unto them that seek deep to hide their counsel from the Lord. Notice, deep. Are you with me? And their works are in the what? Hey, can I just tell you not to say it's not, it's totally true today because we have so much shipping and everything. Hey, thieves prefer dark, to dark. steal in dark. I'm not saying they don't steal in light today. You get package, man. Good night. They just arrested somebody. I think it was down in Texas. I read the story about come across my, my emails and so forth. Man, hey, man, they were a gang. And they, they were following the trucks and just picking up the, the, the all of the loot, thousands and thousands of dollars a day they were taking in. Why? Because they're doing it in the daylight. But generally speaking, things prefer the dark. Why? They don't want to be saying. They don't want any chance of a camera or anything. Now we got cameras. It's a little bit different day we live in. Okay? So, can I tell you what? Aren't you glad he found you? I wasn't looking for him, but he came looking for me. I wasn't seeking him, but he sought me. I wasn't loving him, but he still loved me. Amen? I wasn't interested in being saved, but he was interested in saving me. And that's how it is in everyone's heart and life today if you've been saved by his grace. Amen? But let me give you a second point. Not only are they discovered to become a jewel, but they also got to be dislodged. What do I mean dislodged? You know what the word means, don't you? they got to be separated from something. In other words, a diamond in the rough. Oh, I forgot to put that slide last night in I had last weekend. Oh, I was going to show you all what a diamond in the rough. And I'm telling you, if I showed you the slide, and by the way, this piece of rock is loaded with diamonds valuable size ones, okay? Mm -hmm. According to what was online. And I'm telling you, if you saw the piece of the rock, you would never know they were diamonds. Mm -hmm. Can I tell you why? Because, because diamonds, for them to become valuable, got to be dislodged. They were valueless there. In the dark, still in the deep, just like we were as sinners before we came to Christ. Are you with me? And so something had to happen we need it to be not only discovered, but when you get discovered, you got to be dislodged from some things. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a what? New creature. Old things will pass away. All things become brand new. Well, that's my testimony. I didn't like coming to church, but after I got saved, Pete, I, I couldn't. I didn't want to miss church. I didn't know nothing about the Bible, but all of a sudden, I started reading and I started discovering. Hey, man, it's a love letter personally to me. And I fell in love with the Word of God. Didn't pray much except 911. Oh God, help me! I need this. But all of a sudden, I learned I could talk to God on a daily basis, anytime, any place, any hour. Amen. 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 All things become new to me. I was in tune with God. The old truck driver used to say, "Got your ears on? I mean, can you talk to me? I'm listening. Can you talk to me?" And God, I'm sometimes wondering how many Christians He says even in a day, "Hey, you got your." I got my ears on. Are you are you willing to talk to me? Are you willing to pray to me? Are you willing to ask me? Are you willing to praise me? Are you willing to thank me? We do so little pray. All of us must be dislodged. What does that mean? Every stone, I don't care what your name, I don't care what valuable stone, emerald, rubies, sapphires, uh, I'm not naming them all, uh, diamonds, all when they are original in their natural state, or in the rough, they call it. Okay? Can I tell you what that means? You can't hardly tell that that's what they are. A gem gemolo gemologist does know. He sees it. He can see it just like that. You and I's eye, we can't. Did you know the Bible talks about the church is going to be filled with wheat and tares? Okay? Jesus said. You know what a tear is? Are, are you aware of this? And I, I didn't mean to say this. I'm just going. I'm feeling good, but anyway. <laughs> a tear is an unsaved person that's in the church. Mm. By the way, the churches are full of them. Okay? Plenty of them outside the church, of course. But a tear is someone that looks good, sounds good, uh, may may even think, and maybe the church will preach, oh man, oh, he gives and he does this. Hey, they can be a Sunday school teacher or a deacon. 
shucks. Let me take go further. They can even be a preacher. <laughs> That's right. According to my Bible. Amen. In that day they will say to me when well, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied? Have we not preached? Have we not lived for God? Have we not been in the church? Have we not served the church? Have we not done many mighty works? And on and on it goes. And Jesus Christ will say to them, Depart from me into hell. I never knew you. One of the most saddest verses in all the Bible. Think about that. So I'm just simply saying, there's tears with the wheat. Now let me tell you something. I studied it years ago. Why is that there? Wheat is us. Truly born again believers. But here's the reason for the tares there. And this is the reason we don't know who the tares are. We don't. Occasionally they show their disposition and they tear in, they tear up, and they tear out. <laughs> are you with me? But a tear is someone unsaved. Listen to this. You and I can go through a wheat field all day long and you'll never know what a tear is. Now, i tell you why. Because a tear has almost every single, we'll call it ingredient or feature or characteristic that wheat does. Listen to this. The only one that immediately can see a tear is that wheat farmer. Yep. As God Almighty today looks in this <laughs> congregation, he knows every one of you. Hey, when you think about being dislodged, I don't know about you, this is how my life was lived, and all of us to a certain degree was bound by sin. But you gotta understand three immediate things about being dislodged. Number one, every stone, every stone, regardless of where it's located, what continent, what cave, what hole in the ground, every gem or every jewel not only must be discovered, but must be always dislodged. What does that mean? It means all stones of value are bound. You got that yet? You got it sunk in yet? I don't know about you, but I was bound to my drinking. I was bound to my parties. I was bound to my women. I was bound to my wicked ways. I was bound in sin. Were you? You said, well, I want that bad. You probably might, might have been even worse because now you're lying. <laughs> All right, but anyway, can I simply tell you? We're all bound. Bound by sin, bound by the world, bound by the devil, bound by our own flesh. I didn't know how to conquer my flesh until I met Jesus Christ. My flesh wanted to do everything and have a party time all the time and do this and do that. I gotta tell you what, when I met Jesus Christ, he came in me, and there is somebody greater in me now that can control this old organic nature when I yield to him and surrender to him. Amen? Y'all ain't shouting much today. I tell you what. There's a problem with all gems and jewels. They're all bound. They're enslaved to it, their natural state, and they're bound in their natural place. So the gemologist, like Jesus, knows where they are, comes to where they are, and frees them. Amen. Diamond in the rough is not any good to anybody. Not even value. Right. You know that? You take the uh, the Hope Diamond. Good night. I, I hit this in the sermon over in West Virginia. But yet, I didn't put it in this one. But uh, the Hope Diamond, worth multi-millions, is in Washington, D.C., Okay. The Hulk Diamond was totally valueless in its original state. It wasn't worth a thing. Why? Because you got to be found before you become valuable. Yeah. With me? I don't know about you, I got found. Wasn't valuable back then. Partying, living like the devil, living in sin, bound by Satan, sin, the world, the flesh. But I'm glad that when Jesus... Jesus saved me. I am so grateful. See, I'm getting so excited. I can't even hold anything. Hey, when Jesus saved me, can I tell you what? Those old chains that were binding me, he cut them. My wife will remember this. Remember Hugh Brown in uh, Greensville? They sung that great song. Remember that? Those guys get all excited. And man, they'd, they'd sing out, bellow that song out. Uh, 
that, that Jesus can break any chain. He did for me. He broke the drinking, the partying, the godless kind of way I used to live. And thank God he gave me a life worth living, to be honest with you. I'm on a spiritual high that man don't need drugs and don't need drink. Yeah. Amen. I've been drinking from the well ever since 52 years ago, soon to be 53 years ago. I got saved and met Jesus. I am 100% a satisfied customer of Jesus Christ. Okay? I feel sorry for people don't get where I get, where I am. I really do. I'm enjoying Jesus. I'm enjoying my heavenly journey. And I have been for 50 some years. Hey, you got to understand, next year, God willing, I will be in ministry 50 years. Wow. Ministry, start in 1973. Okay? Not pastor, ministry. But I'll soon celebrate 48 years of pastor. Okay. Well, no, I've already passed 40. Next one, 49. So I'm just simply saying, God's taught me a whole lot, and yet I'm still like a little baby in kindergarten most of the time when I read the Bible. But can I just simply tell you, I had a problem before I got saved. And aren't you glad Jesus is a problem solver? And thank God he solved yeah. my problems immediately when he saved me. Amen? Anybody here ever have addictions? I was watching a documentary several good night months ago, came across and I was interested in it because it was showing these pictures of druggies and everything on the streets all across America. And they, they, they talked about the drug addicts and the heroin users, the cocaine, you name it. They just went through the whole gambit. But I, I, I love my body too much to stick it with a needle. All right? I mean, it's just barely good. It's just barely easy for a doctor to stick me with a needle. Trust me, all right? I'll slug him every time he comes with me. But anyway, I'm getting more immune to that needle thing, of all these things and things we've gone through. But anyway, the TV documentary amazed me that heroin, they interviewed people in heroin users because they, their veins will collapse. Can't shoot their arms anymore. They shoot their bellies. But here's the one that really shocked the stew out of me. One heroin user testified because my veins are gone. She shot her tongue. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine? Why? Because they're bound. But I know somebody can get set free. Amen? amen? And amen. Hey, in order to get set free, and including diamonds in the rough, emeralds, sapphires, rubies, listen to me. They must have someone mightier, stronger, greater, with more power to set them free, to dislodge them. They bring in diamond mines and they bring in these big old okay? Why? Because they've got to be set free by something more mighty and powerful. Isn't that true what Jesus did for us? Man, I'm grateful. Thank God. He broke us loose, yeah. and we became free indeed. Jesus says in John chapter 8, 36, that the Son therefore shall make you free. Ye shall be free indeed. Hey, I was once bound, but you know what? Praise be to God, I've been a free man for 52 years. Free in Christ. Amen? Amen. And thank God for that. Oh, listen to me. Jewels are always gotten in one of two ways, unless you steal them. All right? If I look to this crowd, I won't trust my billfold without a padlock. <laughs> no. <laughs> Jewels are gotten primarily one of two ways. Okay? God gave me a new new word for this one. I, I said they, uh, we got in through an inheritance. Everybody understand that? We were born again into the family, but because we're one of his children, we're going to get everything God is and God has. Think about that. That's a blessing, isn't it? Everything God has is mine. Not because of who I am, because of who he is and his promises to me. I've been adopted into his family, born into his family. So, hey, you get jewels the same way. If you have anything of value at home, all right, if you got a diamond ring worth $25,000, yeah. it's because you may have inherited it or because of your birth in a family, you possess it. Are you with me? Yeah. So you come and get a gem or you get and become one because you've been born. And now what we were? Ye must be what? Born again, Jesus said. I've been born again. I'm not like I used to be. No way, shape, or form. And I tell you what, it's a growing process just like a birth. Hey, a little baby born doesn't know anything about the world. But he's been born, given new life. 
He doesn't even know mama's face. He only knows her voice. But man, once he's born or she's born into the world, everything is brand new. All of a sudden, he's got to be poked in the mouth with a spoon or a bottle to, to eat. He not, hey, he or she inside y'all, ladies that is, ate every day whenever they wanted it. Nobody had to poke anything in their mouth. Think about that. <laughs> but we're born into the family of God. By birth, people possess great valuable jewels, diamonds, and on and on. So by birth, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 4 and 5, we have an inheritance that is incorruptible. By the way, all he's going to say in that verse, I don't, not, I don't need to read it. That is undefiled, faith is not away, reserved in heaven. How do you get heaven? Because you're born into the family of God. And by birth you will be given by God the Father an inheritance. And that inheritance is a home in heaven. Amen. Amen. One of the greatest eternal security verses in all the Bible. That we're saved and saved forever. Amen. And I'm grateful to God for that. So, you got to be birthed and then you got to be bought. Hey, Jules. Anybody here when you got married? Everybody here that ever got married, raise your hand. Oh, yeah. I've married okay, let me ask everybody the same question. Before you got married, minus the ladies, all you men that are married or had been married, or maybe you just proposed and they, they said, no, I wouldn't marry you if you last man on the face of the earth. <laughs> maybe somebody like that didn't see here. Regardless of what your situation is, when you got married, or if you wanted to get engaged, you had to do the same thing. Every one of us had to do. You had to go out and buy a stone. Buy a ring. Come on. Yeah. Why? Because in order for that gem to become yours, to get to somebody, you had to purchase it. Isn't that how we got saved? Yeah. That's exactly how I got saved. But Paul says it best in chapter 7. You have bought with a price. That's right. Be not ye servants of men. You have bought with a price. What's the price? The blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Yeah. The death, the burial of Jesus Christ paid to God in full for me and for you if you'll trust him for our redemption and our reserved place in heaven one day through all eternity. Boy, you can't get that. I don't know about you. That's great. Hey, listen. I don't know about you. I got in both ways. I got in through to God by and became one of his jewels by birth and I became one of his jewels by being bought. Amen. Amen. Praise God. That's something to shout about. Amen. Mm -hmm. That old hymn we used to sing and, and singing again. Jesus paid it. Oh, Aren't you glad he did? Well, I'm glad he did. Hey, they must be dislodged. Secondly, they must be developed. What does that mean? A diamond in the rough, I've already said, all of these stones we've talked about and others, you most of us wouldn't even be able to identify some of them in the rock where they are. Gymnologists can. But every single one of them have to be cleaned up, polished up, to ever sparkle and ever be valuable. Are you with me? And some of us not not looking too sparkly today. <laughs> and I don't sometimes do. Hey, what am I saying? I'm saying gems, jewels must be developed. When they're first found, they're dirty. They don't look like much. And they don't even know their own value. Are you with me? Until the gemologist discovers, dislodges, and then develops them. What am I talking about? He'll take that old piece of rock and he'll start coming back to the place where that diamond is, where that ruby is, or several of them may be in that rock, and he'll bring that chunk of rock into his laboratory, we'll call it, and he'll pick and he'll pick and he'll pick and he'll hammer until he gets it exactly like he wants it. And then that's just the beginning. That's the dislodging. Then he'll take that that diamond in the rough, that stone in the rough, that jewel in the rough, and he'll put it on a piece of equipment that'll clean it. And all of a sudden, the cleaner it gets, the better it starts looking. And then he'll put it on another machine and he'll start polishing that machine. I mean, he's polishing that stone, that gem. And all of a sudden, that gem that was once dirty, dark, you hardly knew it was even there, becomes something prized, beautiful, and something more valuable. Isn't that what he done with us? He made us new creations in Jesus Christ. Man, I'm glad I'm, I don't look anything like I used to. Now, I'm looking worse now than I have physically. 
But I'm telling you one thing. I'm grateful to God. In here, I, I'm a new man. Yeah. Amen? He didn't put a new suit on me. That's what people who wants to get saved through their works are by going to church and joining this and doing this and doing this. That's putting a new, a new, sir, a new suit on a sinner. But God doesn't put a new suit on a sinner. Hey, he takes and puts a sinner and saves him, and he puts a saint into a new suit. Think about it. Amen? Thank God he developed you and I. You and I, before at that development stage, didn't look like much. Hey, when I first got saved, Pete, I didn't know anything about the Bible. As God's my witness, I'm being honest, I thought Job was Job. I did not know it was a man's name. I thought, man, tells me how to be employed in, in the Bible. I'm just, I'm telling you, hey, I'm serious. I did not know that. Okay? First and second Samuel, I thought, well, twin brothers. <laughs> you know? I mean, you, when, you, when you first get saved, you're not very, you're valuable to God, but you're not valuable for God yet. Because you've got to grow, you've got to develop. Now, what we got to do? We've got to come to the place to the point where in the Bible, in church, uh, frequently and studying the word together and learning and learning and growing and growing and growing. He's developing us to be more used by him and valuable for him. Now you're valuable to him the minute you get saved. But you become more valuable for him as God begins working, moving, changing our hearts and our... Hey, we're not much to look, look at. It's diamonds in the rough or right after we first get saved. All right? Think about it. Willis don't look like much. <laughs> but I remember when Willis trusted Christ. All right? I remember when God made him a diamond in the rough and then started polishing and shining and making him better than he used to be. Are you with me? Yeah. I still remember when you got saved and then you told me your sword story of what you had done prior to your conversion and coming to Christ. And I visited him. Do you mind if I tell him? Go right here. I visited him in prison. He went to Tazewell. And, uh, hey, you want to show me how, you, you want me to tell you how dumb he was? Listen to this one. Because he was going away for some years. Okay? And it's true. He came to me one day. He said, Pastor, I need to talk to you about something. I said, what's that? He said, I want you to do, I want you to do something for me. I said, what's that? He said, I want you to pay my bills while I'm in prison. Uh -huh. He trusted this preacher with his money. Man, I saw you go to the Bahamas on it. <laughs> <laughs> and I paid his bills the whole time he was in incarcerated. Oh. And I, sh I would show him and I asked him, you need to see all the financial statements, checkbook, whatever? It's there. I almost didn't do it because I am funny about handling money. Mm -hmm. Church money especially, okay? I don't care if I spend his money. His money. <laughs> Are you with me? Yes. We're not much. All oh, but by the grace of God, when the touch of God discovers us. Amen. And we get saved. Thank God we become diamonds polished, sparkly, and beautiful. Heard a story about a girl that got married. Hadn't, hadn't been back to town for a long time since she left town. And her friend met her on the street. And said, wow, I haven't seen you since graduation. Man, what's up? She said, I got married. She said, well, that's good. She said, well, not so good. He died. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. That's bad. I said, oh, well, not really. Not so bad. Uh, he's, he's rich. Oh, that's good. I said, well, not so good. He's tight. I said, man, that's bad. I said, well, not really. Even though he's tight, he built for me a mansion. I said, wow, that's good said, well, not so good. It caught on fire and burned to the ground. <laughs> so that's bad. I said, well, not really. He was in the mansion. Amen. Amen. <laughs> so sometimes we don't always know who diamonds in the rough. Amen. The only one that knows the value of the gem is the gemologist. Are you with me? John chapter 10, verse 27. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. Listen to what he says. And I what does it say? He knows me. He knows you, I think. <laughs> Amen? Thank God. Hey, let me give you the last point. All valuable gems and jewels must be defended. 
You say, what are you talking about? A little bit like the lady came out of Walmart. This is a true story, by the way. This actually happened. I can't remember the state. A lady came out of Walmart, and she saw men getting in her car. And she happened to be a carrier. And so she reached in her purse after pushing the cart toward her car, pulled out a 38, said, Get out of my car now! Mm. Thought they were stealing. So, man, those are the Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> and they walked away. And, man, while she was putting her groceries in the car, and while she was just getting ready to leave, a cop car came in and blocked her in. And she was called out of the car to come out and to leave her purse there and be unarmed. I mean, it was a real story. And so she got out of the car with nothing in her hands. And she says, sir, what are you, what are you doing? Why, why, why in the world? I said, well, I want you to know that's not your car. <laughs> <laughs> she had started moving it. And, uh, man, can you imagine such a situation? All right? <laughs> But hey, I got news for you. She was defending what she thought was hers. Are you with me? Valuable diamonds aren't left out somewhere. Another true story literally does. It happened. A lady was given a $20,000 ring. Valuable. Okay? By her husband. And she just sit it out, I guess maybe in the kitchen or wherever she put placed it. All of a sudden, she lost that $20,000 ring. This is many years ago, by the way, the story happened. So today, probably 50000 or more. Very, very bunch of rocks and and, uh, and carrots and so forth and so on. I gave my wife a carrot just the other day. Amen, <laughs> amen. But can I just simply tell you, valuable. And she just left it somewhere. She took it all my own, went forward. But she couldn't find it anywhere in the house, in the home. Husband looked for it. Family helped her look for it. Couldn't find anything. Her little four-year-old looked at Mama and saw, you know, looked, looked at her and could tell she was concerned and, and distraught. Said, Mama, what in the world wrong with you? So well, I'm looking for my diamond. He said, you mean to tell me that little thing, a ring, with a little stone on top of it? And she said, yeah. She said, have you seen it? He said, yeah. Uh-huh. He said, can I ask you a question? She said, do you know where it is? He said, yeah. And she thought, man, hot dog, wonderful. Great. I got my $20,000 ring back. Can you tell me where it is? Somewhere thrown out in the woods. Oh, no. Oh. She said, what? Why did you do that? Do you remember that day you made me mad? Can I tell you, even before that ever happened, I'd have got $20,000 a rear end. Anybody <laughs> <laughs> with me? Me too. Wouldn't you? <laughs> Little brat. <laughs> listen to me all jewels must be defended listen to what Paul Paul says I mean excuse me Peter says in 1 Peter chapter verse 4 verse 5 the inheritance is heaven it's a reservation made for us the moment you trust by faith Jesus Christ look at the next promise in verse 5 who oh what's the word church Cat. now you don't see this unless you dig into the Greek and I'm not a Greek scholar but that word kept means more than you think it does. It means to be guarded, defended, protected. But the word comes from a military Greek word, which means the top of the top of the top of the Roman legionnaires. There were Rome's officers and soldiers were divided in three different groups. All right? One group, not as strong, not as courageous, not as honored, and not, not as many kills. But as you progressed in the Roman military, you could become part of the legionnaires. That's what that word means, but it means even better than that. It means taken from the legionnaires to become the Praetorian Guard. You say, what's that? Never read about that. Read it. You'll find out about it. Check it up online today. Only the elite of the elite of the elite of all of the Roman soldiers would ever be trusted as a Praetorian guard. Why? Because Nero or any other emperor depended on their very lives to be guarded by the Praetorian guard. Ain't nobody got a shout there when you think about God and what he's done, what he's seen to you and I? He has kept me for 52 years. He's kept me secure, sure, Say, I cannot lose it. Amen. Why? Because God, the same one that saved me, the same one that secures me. The same one that, thank God, makes me safe. 
until I get home. Amen? Amen? And the same is true with you. You've been saved by the grace of God. Hey, I got news for you. This gem can't be stolen by anybody else. This gem can't be ripped off by anybody else. This gem can't be taken by anybody else or hijacked as things are today. Why? Because I'm safe, I'm secure, I'm kept by Him. Amen. Are you with me? Yes. Praise God. You're looking at somebody, I'm kept. Amen and amen and amen. Thank God for that. See, the problem, guard, uh, precious, valuable gems must always be guarded. Let me give you the last one. we got to go home. All gems are discovered for one reason, to be displayed. Think about it. Diamond and the cave can't be displayed. It's still enslaved. It's bound. Are you with me? When you give your wife a diamond, okay, regardless of the size, you give that to her, does she take it and put it in her drawer and say, well, thank you, honey. I appreciate that. No. And, and never wear it? No. They wear it. Why? Because diamonds are meant. Precious stones are meant to do what? Be displayed. Anybody here ever go to a jewelry store? You have, haven't you? Yeah. Okay. I was down there before. Mm -hmm. When you used to go, I can't say that today. It's been a long time since I've been in a jewelry store. Yeah. Right. But years ago, when you went to a jeweler's place and you bought something from them, regardless of the ring or whatever, whether a diamond or whatever, they would come back and they would ask you a second question. Thank you for your purchase, but let me ask you a question. What casket would you like with that? Okay? Yeah, don't tell me y'all know that. Mm -hmm. I'm teaching all kinds of good things today. <laughs> that little box that that diamond is placed in yeah. is called by all jewelers, at least it used to be, a casket. Hey, let me just quickly say, do you not know when you choose that casket, it's got nothing to do with the burial? Mm -hmm. It's all about you, and it's all about displaying yeah. a dead body for those who's going to come. True. I'm not trying to be any kind. I'm not. I bought the best I could afford for my mom. Okay? Wasn't the best, by no means. And I got a bargain when, when, when she passed away. God worked out some great miracles for me then. But I'm just simply telling you, friend, that casket, that body, when they raise that lid and they hit that, what are they doing? They're displaying them. We may not think of it that way. That's exactly what we're doing. Displaying someone dead. And I've said this before, and I'll say it again. If Jesus doesn't come before I die, and I die, and any of you at my funeral, and you dare come by my casket and say, doesn't he look good, I'm going to come back to haunt you. <laughs> God have mercy if a dead person looks better than they did when they were sick. God have mercy. But when they, when they were living, they had blood flowing through their bodies. They must be displayed. Are you aware that's exactly what Malachi chapter 3 is talking about? In that day, God says, when I make up my jewels, what day? Are you with me? Yeah. Whether you believe this or not, or understand this or not, if you've been saved by God's grace, by the Lord Jesus Christ's death, burial, and resurrection, you are going one day to be displayed by God. I told you you're special. What does that mean? You are trophies of God's amazing. You're somebody. And thank God. The Christmas was the Christmas when I was in the seventh grade. I'm closing with this. We had just moved into Greenwood Drive residency that Dad and others had built. And uh, first Christmas in that home, they came to me as they all, as parents do, hey, do you have any idea what you like for Christmas? I threw several things out. But when I woke up that Christmas morning, there being seventh grade, you don't have toys and things like that. Let's pool table, something cool. But anyway, uh, but when I got up that morning, we, we had breakfast as we always did. Always oyster soup, okay? I say soup because I didn't eat them nasty oysters. I just right. like the soup and crackers. But, but uh, that's all, that was the tradition every Christmas morning. And then and only then did, did we go in and scatter the gifts or whatever. You know, mom, get, I, my gift to mom, my gift to dad, so for so long. And when I got up under the tree, there was a little small box sitting up under that tree. And I thought, man, I have no idea. I had not asked anything that small. When I ask for something, I want big stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and that little thing sitting there, 
And so we, 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 we open up, you know, you get pants and shirts and that, you know, it's a time. But then we give you school clothes for free. <laughs> because if they're killing two birds at one time, you got to get school clothes anyway, so why not use Christmas to do it? Amen? Oh, and not in the middle of the year, not doing any other time, just do it. Load them down during Christmas and you don't have to buy them anything else the rest of the year. And that's what my parents did. And I saved that last little box of, oh, hey, much in that. Maybe, maybe, maybe my dad put a hundred bucks in it. <laughs> you know, whatever. Open that little box. It just a little, and it was velvet. And I thought, well, I don't know what this is. It's a jewelry box. I ain't never asked for anything jewelry. And then I popped that thing open, and man, under the glare of even the, up, uh, the, uh, the top lighting, it was just shining a glow. It was my birthstone ring. Didn't ask for it. But oh, how special it was. They gave me something I didn't want, didn't ask for. It. And I wore that thing until almost probably close to college. And then, you know, your fingers get fat and other such things that you couldn't wear it anymore. <laughs> And I may even have that ring somewhere, I'm not sure. But it's my birthstone ring. But all oh, looking at it inside that casket, when I flip the box, that jewel shine brightly. Now listen, hear me well. Every one of this room is going to die if Jesus carries, if Jesus doesn't come. And when you die, you don't see it, but it's going to happen immediately. You die here, but man, no sooner that last breath is breathed here, you immediately go before God. And when you go before God, hey, you're in that casket. You get a casket here, that's bodily. But before that body and even put into a casket here, there's another casket that opens up there. And you will be displayed for all eternity as one of the choice trophies of God's gospel and God's grace. Amen? I don't know about you. That would make a Presbyterian shout and run around the, the building. But I should have known better than the crowd would rub it in. I'm one day going to be displayed for all eternity. And so are you. Ever get bowed? Every eye closed. Head bowed, eyes closed, don't look around. And ask a quick, quick, quick question. And that is simply this. In this room, how many in this room can say, I know, preacher, that I know, that I know, that I know, that if I died, I'm going to heaven. I'm one of his jewels. I've had a day, a time, a place. I know that I know. I trusted and received Jesus Christ as my Savior. And you're unashamed and you're grateful to God for it. Would you raise your hand real high all over the building? I know that I know that I know. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. You can put your hands down. Could I ask a second quick question, both online and in here? If there's one that did not raise your hand, you couldn't say that you know that you know that you know that. But you look at your life and it's been a wreck. Look at your life and you think of where you are and what, where you could have been had something better happened to you long ago. I got good news for you. Don't care where you come from. Don't care where you've been. Willis is an example of that. Inmates every week I preach to examples of that. But God can take the worst of the worst, change it into something valuable, precious, special to Him as well as even to others. Would you like to have that new life we've talked about, we've preached about? Would you like to become one of his jewels today, my friend? You can online. If you're watching this online, do you know that you know your jewel? Do you know that you're one of his chosen? Do you know you're one in his family? You've been birthed. You've been bought by the blood of Jesus Christ. I can't ask online, but I can ask you, would there be someone in this auditorium today that could say with a raised hand, preacher, I register with exactly what you preached about and what you talked about today. And God spoke into my heart just today. I recognize I need a change. I need a new heart, a new life. I need to be saved, preacher. I need that change you talked about in my heart and my life. Preacher, today, would you pray for me before we leave? And you think about this online as you watch online. But if there's someone in this room today with a raised hand and say, Preacher, that's me. Just pray for me, preacher. I'm not saved. Don't know for sure that if I died, I'd go to heaven. I'd like to know. I'd like to be certain. I'd like to be sure. Pray for me today. Anybody like that at all in this auditorium, just put it up real high put it right back down before we close in prayer. Anybody. Second ones I want to turn to is those looking online. Would you trust Christ today? Would you become one of his jewels today? You say, preacher, I know I'm a sinner. I know I'm in need of Christ. I'm in need of a changed heart, a changed life. Preacher today, would you? Tell me how I can be saved. you got to know that you're a sinner. That's pretty easy. Still, one thing makes you a thief. 
Tell one line makes you a liar. We're all sinners by birth. We're born that way. Nobody taught us how to do that. We, it becomes natural. But the good thing is, in that natural state, you're going to go to hell. But the good news is, in that natural state, God, the gemologist, can discover you today through his son, Jesus Christ. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. No brainer. None do it good, no, not one. Romans 3. But the next thing you need to understand is God says, but God committed his love, demonstrated love while we were yet sinners. Christ died for us. Aren't you grateful Jesus died for you? He died to save you. He died so that your sin debt could be paid toward God so that God could align you to his heaven. He became your sin who knew no sin. And you've got to understand his death, burial, and resurrection is all God demands for you to be saved. He loved you that much. He paid it for your way to go to heaven. All you got to do is receive it. Trust it. Believe it. Third thing you need to understand is the Bible says in Romans 6.23, the wages of death is, the wages of sin is death or hail, the Bible says. So basically, it simply means this. If we go on in sin and we die and face God, we've got to answer for our own sin death. That means to die and go to a devil's hail. And that is just as real. Jesus spoke more about hell than he ever did about heaven. Let me encourage you, friend. The good news is you don't have to go to hell. You don't have to bear your own sin. Jesus bore in his own body your sin. Paid your sin debt. All you need to do is receive him. The rest of that verse says the wages of sin, the payday of sin is death or hell. But the gift of God, that's the good news. Gifts are something given. Free it. Can't work for it. Can't do something to deserve it. Gifts are given from others, usually because they care or they love someone. God loves you so much, he provided a gift for you. What's the gift? The gift is eternal life. But every gift given must be bought and paid for by another. And the Bible tells you in that verse, the gift was paid for through and in Jesus Christ. But the gift of God is eternal life. That's heaven. Listen to the last three words. Through the Lord Jesus Christ. He bought it. He paid for it in full. All you need to do is receive it. When you receive Jesus, in Him comes the gift of everlasting eternal life. Will you trust Him today? Will you receive Him today? Will you call on Him today? The Bible closes and says, Romans 10, verse 13, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall, not might, shall, not maybe, shall, not hope so, shall be saved. I don't have time to go into the Greek word saved, but it means delivered to and from. Delivered from sin to his righteousness, delivered from death to life, delivered from hell to heaven when you get saved. And it's a guaranteed deal because God's in it, God did it, God provided it, and God can do it for you too, my friend. Would you call on where you're watching this, where you're tuned in to? Would you call on right where you are? Pull your car off if you listen to this by your phone or whatever. And would you call on him and trust this Christ, this God that loves you so much? Would you call on him and say something like, Dear God, I believe with all my heart I am a sinner. I do not deserve your love, your gift. But today I realize as a sinner, I so am in need of you and your son, Jesus Christ. I believe Jesus died, was buried, and rose the third day. And I call on him to come into my heart, my life, forgive my sin, and become my Savior. Save me and forgive me. Now help me this day to begin letting him live his life in me and through me. In Jesus' name. You prayed that. You write us, contact us. We'll give you the same thing we give the inmates in prison. And that is a booklet hitting the mark. We'd love to know you trusted Christ. Contact us. Let us know. And we'll rush that booklet straight to you about 10, 12 pages. Fairly large print. Bible verses there. Stories there. Illustrations there. Truth is there. And it'll jump start your newfound faith in Jesus Christ. Right for today, we'll take care of it. We'll send it postage free. And we thank you for listening and we thank you for saying yes 
to Christ. Our Heavenly Father, God, in this house today, we're so grateful for a good spirit. Thank you for the liberty to preach. Lord, thank you that God Almighty, though we were unvaluable to this world, that God, you saw something valuable in us when you saved us and we become one of your jewels. Bless now, Father, I pray as we dismiss. Give us a great lunch, great day. And uh, Lord, I pray, bless the next service we attend and touch this church in a special way. Supply and provide every need. And Lord, we'll thank and praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. And God's church and people said, Amen. 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 You are dismissed. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you.